This episode is all about broad beans. Now, like all the veg we plant, it's key to prepare the soil first. So give it a good handful of seaweed dust. We're not using chicken manure pellets as the soil doesn't need any extra nitrogen. Then it's time to rake it in and get our seeds ready. It's an early planting for broad beans. Like as blue as the sky is, it's absolutely freezing yeah. here. Like we're in early March. What do we do next? So we've got our soil raked, so we just need to mark out the rows. Right. So Karen, you know the way last season and the season before, in fact, we had terrible problems with you and your measurement. So this year I have brought my ta oh. handy tape measure with me and I will have it with me at all times during filming. So we're going 45 centimetre rows with broad beans, okay? Okay. So put out the uh, law there. We just mark out the rows like that. And then you mark out two up, up there. Here? Yeah. Okay. So we're going to do four rows in total. Yeah. We just start by putting them on the soil. So we're looking at 15 centimetres. These are one of the easiest things you can grow. There's, there's nothing to it. Okay. Yeah. I'll, I'll remind you of saying that. Sweet corn, anyone? These don't look, look too bad. These are dead to me now. Oh. I'm moving on. How could you remind me of that? That's terrible. <laughs> One of the little things that I often do though with, with broad beans is to just do an extra couple at the end of each row. Okay. So if you just put kind of three like that, so they're just extras in case any of them get eaten by slugs. Okay, so I guess we don't leave them open to the elements though. Is this just like garlic now where we just push them into yes, the ground? Yes, it is. To get out cork and came out there, guys. <laughs> How far down do we put them? Five centimetres. <laughs> so just to the, the knuckle on your, on your fingers. Just okay. literally stick them down like that. Okay, brilliant. First really veg simple, are in the ground. Yeah. Label. It's okay, if we're going up to the glass house to do the different module trays yeah. and the bits and pieces. Right, hold fire. Michael Kelly. Yes. It's series three. Yes. It's time. For what? I want my own container corner. Okay, I think that's an amazing idea. What? Do I have to do anything? No, 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 if I have it, it's fine. Okay, Go on. don't forget your tape measure though. You don't need a tape measure? Go, be gone. I've got it, I have a plan. So there's gonna be like a teal, tree shelves, hanging baskets, and there's gonna be the table and chairs. Oh my God, it's gonna be amazing. So I have a cunning plan. What is it, Karen? Okay, so... <laughs> Until container corner is ready, yeah. we're going to do a controlled experiment. Okay. You're going to direct sow over there. The, the seeds. The seeds. And I'm going to sow plants which are about six weeks. So you got on. these in a the garden centre? I did get these in the garden centre. Okay. Because you know, sometimes you miss the window or you don't have time yeah, yeah. or whatever. So you just go, okay. go straight to the plant. Yeah. Bit of feed as usual. Bit of feed as usual. Four, yeah? Same kind of spacing apart. So as if 15, they had 15 centimetres is what we did in the bed, so so something similar, I think, for that. Okay. And we'll try it. So you have the benefit, of course, of yours are six weeks further along than mine. Do you want me to give you a bit of help there? <laughs> no. Are you sure? Yeah. Because right, then no. you'll take credit for it. Okay, go on then. <laughs> so your only worry now is uh, how are you going to get this over to Container Corner? <laughs> God. I don't know, but we've at least a month Well, it's your experiment, so it. good luck with that. Oh, thanks, Michael Kelly, for your help as ever. And one month on, it's time to get back to the raised beds where Mick is already hoeing away. That man never stops. There must be method to your madness. There is method okay, to my madness. On. You should always hoe when there are no weeds, basically. Okay. So that's that. There's a couple, couple of little gaps, and that's to be expected sometimes with this. And it's exactly why we did a couple of extras. So yeah. what we're going to do is transplant them and just fill in a couple of the gaps. When you've got the cluster, how do you decide? Do you pick the kind of healthiest looking plant or is it all about spacing or well, a combination of the two? Like, yeah, it's all about spacing and then minimizing the amount of destruction. Like you don't want to kind of transplant two of them. So I would say, like if we take this one out, okay. we'll have, you know, almost oh, the perfect 15. width between this yeah. and this. So you want to try and get as much kind of root, root as possible, yeah? Yeah. So get, getting in underneath it. We're going to pop that in there. 
And I think that roll is pretty good now. So if you want to do the same there, so I think leave that one and that one and take these two out. Yeah. I like this okay, new ruthless good. streak to you. Because otherwise you're just faffing about. They need, <laughs> like you want to be, use all the space as best you can, right? Yeah, there you go. So that's okay. nice. That roll is good now, isn't it? Yeah. So come here, is there a slight issue with um, slug? Sorry, I meant slug. <laughs> We were slightly wondering about this earlier on because mm. there is a little bit of damage to some of the leaves, particularly kind of at the end of this row. So I've got a nice local brew here. This is a, a very simple beer trap. Nice shallow saucer, but you kind of have it up like that a little bit. Don't bury it in the soil because you tend to get beetles, which are actually beneficial kind mm. of drowning in it as well. Okay. They like good quality beer. Don't pawn any old rubbish off on them. And also they don't like non-alcoholic beer. So maybe there's something in the alcohol that attracts them. And anything else, like do we need to feed these heroes now no. or? No, these are really happy. We got lots of nutrition in, so these are fine. It's only taken a couple of weeks. Well, technically three series. But with a lot of hard graft and pulling in a few favors, we've created a deadly little growing space. Ta-da! It's Container Corner. It's amazing, I love it. Is it absolutely if I had, brilliant? If I had a hat, I would eat it now. No need to eat your hat, but we should get back to growing our broad beans. I, I want to, you know, bask in the glory that mine are doing so much better, but to be fair. Cheers, we're like that height when we, when we planted them. They so. did have a, a really good head start. They are doing very well though, in fairness. How are yours getting on? I'm not quite sure what's going on with this one, but I'm hopeful it'll come good. And these are, I don't know if you've, if you've noticed this, but... Yes, uh, I have noticed have you the been flowers studying them? appearing. So with broad beans, the flowers are the precursor to the pods, and the pods are where you get your beans from. So if you've got lots of white flowers, which you do. They're on the way. They're yeah. on the way. <laughs> you, what you need to do with broad beans is kind of box them in to stop them falling over. If you've got a very heavy wind, it could, it could kind of collapse them. These plants are going to get to about 90 centimeters tall. So we get just a little bit of string or twine. So we just make a little, another expert another knot. Another expert knot. All and those years of brownies, boy scouts. That's it. And if you just want to go, go that way with it. So nice, yeah. nice and tight. We can go loop around again. Okay, so and then just the last one, loop it around that. Thanks very much. That's lovely. <laughs> Bye now. So this is the sort of classic problem of broad beans, which is you get aphids or, oh or black fly, word. and they're kind of they're quite infested with them up yeah. at the top. They start at the top here because this this kind of growing tip is actually the most tender part, like because they're baby little leaves, so they tend to sort of start here. God, there really is loads. So we've got, two, we've got two kind of things we can do. One is that the, the ladybird is the natural predator of the aphids. And so we do have one little ladybird here. Why, so he's, yes. he's obviously cottoned on to a bit. She, <laughs> that's his food. Oh, fantastic. So and we he, have a resident ladybird. We Excellent. just need her to bring all her friends. Well, there's another intervention. There is, which is just a, a strong hose. Now you need to be very careful with this because you could kind of break the tip off. You can see that it quite effectively gets gets rid of the ones that are there, and hopefully, oh, I want to go. You want to go? There's something very appealing about that. Yeah. So and apart from that, we've nothing much else to do except keep a very close eye on this aphid problem. I think. And don't worry if those pesky aphids come back. Just get the hose out once again. And just like we did for Karen's broad beans in container corner we're going to put up some support sticks. We really don't want them blowing over in the wind. Mick is spot on. The broad beans in container corner are doing really, really well. So well that I actually have the very first beans of the season. So we're going to leave them, get their grow on and come back and check in in a little while. The amount of aphids or black fly, as I would probably call them, over on the broad beans in the raised bed kind of freaked me out. So I really want to check in on my heroes here to see if they've uh, suffered the same plight. So far, so good. And I am black fly slash aphid free. However, 
I'm not going to rest on my laurels. I'm going to take immediate affirmative action and I'm going to prick out the tips of these plants. As this is the tenderest part of the plant and aphids love munching on it. So I'm staying one step ahead of them. They are not getting their hands on my container beans. It's harvest time for our broad beans in container corner. Woohoo! Check them out. They are literally sprouting everywhere. Like, look at this dude. Oh, I can't wait to taste it. So low maintenance. I mean, seriously, how much work have you actually seen me do on these guys over the last few weeks? Not a lot. Happy days. Don't even worry about the yellowing kind of leaves. It's literally just a sign that all the nutrients have come from the soil into the plants for them to grow the vegetables and it's simply time to give them a harvest. So, okay, it's time, twist and pull. I'm getting excited about the deliciousness and the quality and the size and the crunch of broad beans. I may need to get out more. <laughs> Victory is mine, Karen. Oh, who said it was a competition? These were riddled with black fly, True. you remember? Yeah. Shh, shh, shh. And we squirted them off and waited for the ladybirds to do their thing, and they are perfection They are itself, perfection itself. They? Enough with the all. Enough with the show and tell. Enough with the show and tell, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Let's get harvesting. Let's get the rest of it. Right, these plants have been well and truly gleaned. It's phenomenal There's harvest, isn't it? There's a serious it? harvest. We have to now pot all of these. Get them ready for the kitchen. What? And you know, Mick, never one to miss the teaching moment. There's actually nitrogen in all of this plant, in the leaves and the stems and everything, which is why I'm chopping all these up and I'm going to dig them into the soil, and that'll make this soil really, really healthy for whatever's grown in here next year.